Welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Mind Behind Make More Work Less. Hi, my name is Fong Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also a best-selling author. And every single day, I have the opportunity to help others unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed. Today on Unlocking the Mind, we're looking at another psychological term, another cognitive bias, so that we can better prepare ourselves, so that we can understand how we're actually making decisions, or actually avoid situations that we may or may not know is actually being done to us. So our, our topic for today is, uh, we'll start for, with a question. Do you believe that if you have too much knowledge, it could be a bad thing? Or do you believe that if you're an expert in something, that it could be a bad thing? Well, most likely people will say, well, of course not. If I know a lot of stuff, it's probably good. But the problem is, it actually inflicts the curse of knowledge or the curse of expertise, which is today's cognitive bias. And that is where an individual who is communicating to another individual or others actually is unknowingly assumes that everybody else has the same background knowledge or has the same understanding as them so that when they're explaining something, they feel like, hey, they already know this stuff. I could get, get into a little bit more details. Well, that's not actually the case. More likely than not, we're overestimating the amount of knowledge, the amount of uh, information that people know before we actually explain something to them. And that's why sometimes when you go to class or when you go talk to an investment banker or you go talk to a realtor, they might go and tell you a whole bunch of information. And after a while, you sit there and go, wait a minute, I, I don't exactly know what's going on. And then you have to ask more questions and you go, hey, can you go back and explain this to me? And then they'll start talking to you again and giving you more information. And then go, yeah, I still don't understand. And you find that they keep on getting more and more frustrated and trying to explain something that they already know. They have the background knowledge but they don't understand that you may or may not have that background knowledge. So that they keep on going and keep on going without changing the way they're explaining it to you. And that is the curse of knowledge. A very good example of this is everybody here, I'm assuming, has played the game charades. You go out there or Pictionary, you go out there and you draw something or you reenact something. And in your mind, you know exactly what you're reenacting. You know exactly what you're drawing. But other people sit there and go, what the heck is that? Is that a dog? Is that a horse? What, what are you trying to draw? What are you trying to act? What are you trying to um, gesture to us to make, make us guess what you're, you're, you have in mind? And the thing is, you have something in your mind, you have this knowledge, but you have been overestimating what that person actually knows. You're overestimating the background knowledge that the, these people know so that you're doing certain things, but you're not changing the way you're presenting it eventually, after you do a whole bunch of different trial and errors and uh, different other strategies, you eventually come up with a solution to in your charades or your Pictionary to get that message across for somebody to guess what that information is. Now this, uh, the curse of knowledge has been tested and there's studies being done before. And back in, I believe it was 1990, there was a study done to see how many people can guess what another person is thinking. And the thing is, so they have a group of people tapping a rhythm on their, on, on their pencils and they go, how, how likely do you believe that if somebody listened to this tapping of uh, this rhythm that you're tapping, that they can guess what song you're actually tapping? And most likely than not, they would think that for sure, they can, uh, they can guess this song for sure. It's very easy, it's very simple. Once they hear this tapping, they'll know for sure it's gonna be that song. And more likely than not, it's actually very overestimated and people can't guess what that song is. So case in point, let me demonstrate to you. Let me uh, think of a tune now and let's go like this. So what song is that? Let me do it. I'm going to do it a little faster. So what song is that? How many people can guess what it is? Now in my mind, I know exactly what song that is because I have that knowledge and I assume that you know that song. So by the time I'm tapping this, I'm assuming that you know for sure what song that is. So for people who couldn't guess what that is, uh, the song was actually just the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. E. Now the thing is, now that you know, I can tap it again and you can hear it and you can sing it in your head. Right? So that is the curse of knowledge. That is how we are uh, anticipating people thinking that uh, we may or may not what they know. So the thing is, how is this applied in our daily lives? 
Well, in teaching, for instance, when you go into school and the professor is telling you all this information and you may or may not know what's going on. Uh, when it comes to buying houses or buying an investment property or buying an investment product, they might be giving you a lot of information that they in their minds know about and you may or may not know. And the thing is, sometimes when somebody is so expert in that item or that product, being a high ticket, high quality products, they know inside and out and they might overprice those items. If something was a low quality and they know inside and out how low quality that is, they might even over uh, under price that item. So that's how we are looking at how curse of knowledge can actually affect pricing system or sales systems or marketing uh, strategies and all that kind of stuff. Another great example is our, our diamonds. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people out there has bought a diamond before. And just think back, all that stuff they tell you, the clarity, the cut, the clear, uh, the, 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 all the four C's and all that kind of stuff. You might sitting, be sitting there at the time going, what the heck is this person talking about? And the thing is, you didn't have the knowledge. They eventually explain the, the, the items for you and they explain why it's worth what it's worth and why it's high quality and all kinds of stuff. Well, how important are the C's in the diamond? And therefore you start gaining that knowledge. So one thing to kind of uh, avoid this, this, uh, this curse of knowledge being done to you is that you can ask questions. Ask more questions, ask more clarity, rephrase the question, or even rephrase the information that you got back to the person so that they can get uh, the feedback that yes, they got the message across. Or you can ask them to come up with a different way of uh, telling you the information. So that is how you can avoid the curse of knowledge. And now that you acknowledge the fact that the curse of knowledge actually exists, when you start telling people something, you're able to tell it in a different way or you could change it up and kind of present it in a different way or ask for feedback to see if you're actually getting that message across. Uh, in this day and age, technology is all over, all over place and there's some generations that's not very good at technology. And it's one of those things where you have the younger generation trying to teach the older generation about the technology, but the younger generation has that knowledge, that background. So it's sometimes they get very frustrated. So the key is go in and tell, uh, teach it in a way that you could, uh, explain it better or teach it in a way that's different so that in, eventually the person who's learning from you is actually getting that information. Get them to give you feedback, get them to re uh, rephrase the situation to you and that you can understand that they are understanding what you're trying to tell them. So until next time, today is the day where you can unlock your potential. I'll see you later.